It's a no snooze situation. Matt hates his tiny bedroom. It's so small. It's practically a closet. Still, Matt's mom refuses to let him sleep in the guest room. After all, they might have guests. Someday. Or a year. Then Matt does it. Late one night when everyone's in bed. He sneaks into the guest room and falls asleep. Poor Matt. He should have listened to his mom. Because when Matt wakes up, his whole life has changed. For the worse. And every time he falls asleep, he wakes up in a new nightmare. Hello and welcome back to Goosebumps Overviews, the show where we talk about Goosebump books and judge them on their merit. Tonight's episode is book number 54, Don't Go to Sleep. Already I'm getting some chills with this one. I'm hoping we're going to see the boogeyman. I'm hoping... Some kid's gonna be shit in the bed. You better get your shitting pants on, cause it's time to shit yourself. The cover is pretty good. I really like how this cover makes you think there's something under the bed. A lot of kids do have this fear of something under the bed, something hiding in the dark. So that's a good thing to play off of here. I especially like the monster hand, how it seems so imposing over the child in the bed. However, there is one crucial flaw with this cover. This is a complete lie. None of this happens, not in the book, nothing to do with the book. In fact, th the book could be called something completely different and would be fine. Just like how Halloween doesn't need to be called Halloween. Don't go to sleep doesn't need to be called don't go to sleep. It's not really focused on sleep. A lot of the horror is not focused on the bedroom. But we'll get into the story in a quick second. Let me just continue to talk about this. I really hate how this cover is a lie. The cover is the reason why I never read this book as a kid, because my parents would not let me purchase this, because they thought it would give me nightmares and uh, allow me to not sleep in my bed. Which is a shame, because this looked like a really good book, and... Also, what is the deal with all the lightning? My god, that is so lame. <laughs> Another complaint I have, like all Goosebump books, I don't think the character looks like this, this kid portrayed in the bed, because I think he had blonde hair, like a, like a, who's a freaking toe-headed kid, not a brunette. Can you call guys with brown hair brunettes? I, mean, I don't know. Never heard anyone say that. It's just that just a thing for girls. I don't know. I don't know these things. Anyway, it's a great cover. I just wish it wasn't a lie. That would make it so much better. Meet Matt Amsterdam. Now Matt Amsterdam, he does not like his life. First of all, his bedroom is about the size of a walk-in closet. His bed and desk and pretty much everything is just shoved in there like he's uh, living in a hoarder's house. It's like his family doesn't care about him. He makes a point to say that his dad died when he was a baby and his mother is taking the job of raising his two siblings and himself by herself. So right off the bat we got another character who hates his life and has horrible siblings. Man, I haven't seen that one before. But this one, I kind of feel sorry for the mom in this one, because I have a feeling she's probably going through a midlife crisis, has all these kids to take care of, and just wants a nice moment to calm and settle down. However, she is ignoring key problems with her children, bullying the younger kid, and it... There's a guest room in the house, much bigger than Matt's room, 
But Matt can't sleep in there because maybe they'll have guests? That's the one thing this mom does that doesn't make any sense. And sets up a possible ending for the book as a twist that is for sale as fuck. So Matt's complaining about not being able to sleep in the guest room. And his mother is telling him, no, they'll have guests one day, he can't stay in there. It's kind of a dick move. So Matt decides, hey, I'm gonna sleep in that room anyway, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. So he does. The next day, he wakes up in the body of a 16-year-old. That's right. When Matt goes to sleep, he wakes up as somebody else. And I mean, like, he goes from different ages, different occupations, different families. He even changes into different species altogether. Like, old men, 16-year-old. I think at one point he was a circus performer. That <laughs> was pretty goofy. And a lizard monster. Yeah, that's right, a lizard monster. That was pretty crazy. <laughs> I was not expecting that. That almost made it a little too goofy for me. So, the book is called Don't Go to Sleep because every time he goes to sleep, these new things happen. Which, at the very least, they got the title right to go with the book in some sense. But like I said, it could have been called a lot of different things. And it still kept this enigma of with it. I'm still pissed about the cover. Overall, I've kind of enjoyed this book. It's a really nice sci-fi title. And there are some interesting elements. It turns out uh, Matt's being chased by these two people who seem to appear in every single reality he gets teleported into. They're like the men in black chasing after him. And he keeps running across this same girl that seems to know a little bit more about this than you would think. And these parts are really compelling and interesting and keep you... it keeps you involved in the story. And how this all gets resolved, I guess makes sense? Not really. It makes sense on a symbolic level, but not much through logic. Plus, we never really get explained how this is happening or why. Is it just his defiance to accept the way things are? Is that what caused this reality warp? And if so, wouldn't this cause, like, millions and trillions of reality warps to happen? I got news for you, Goosebumps. Thousands of people hate their lives. And wishing that their lives were different, that doesn't take them into reality warps. This book does carry a message with it, and that's kind of, you know, just kind of be happy, be happy with what you got, which is an iffy message for me. And being that still, this has been done before with the book Why I'm Afraid of Bees, but I will say that this book does it a little bit better and a little bit more in a scary sense, whereas Why I'm Afraid of Bees is just kind of dumb. And the twist at the end? Hmm. How do I define this? Like, like I said, the twist is predictable. You could see it coming miles away, but it doesn't make it bad. It's still somewhat good. I kind of wish they involved the pursuers a little bit more in the ending. That would have made it more interesting. So for spoilers, the people chasing after Matt are people called the Reality Police, who attempt, you know, to attempt to stop people from breaking the laws of reality, even if they didn't mean to do it. Which again, kind of steps into the territory of Chicken Chicken, where this seems like uh, the punishment doesn't really fit the crime. I don't, uh, I don't know, I, I guess there's something scary about children getting unfairly punished. The world's unfair, I know. But Matt resolves this problem by sleeping in his own bedroom, and I guess symbolically that represents he's willing to accept his old life just to escape this new one. I guess I kind of read that, I, I kind of read into that. Like he turns into a squirrel and he basically sneaks inside his house. Uh, he turns into a fat kid at one point. <laughs> that was pretty funny. It's like a chubby, 
Dumbo trying to break into his own house so he can fall asleep in his own bed. That was a scene. So he's back into his normal life, and everything seems to have resolved itself. And then one day, his mom decides to give him the guest room to sleep in. And Matt just starts screaming. The end. It's kind of ambiguous. We don't exactly know if it's the action of him defying his parent. Or rather, his mom. The ending is kind of ambiguous, because we don't know if it's the act of defiance that caused the reality warp, or the fact that it was the room that caused the reality warp. We don't really know. So, I am a bit iffy on that. It's even possible that all of this could have been a dream. So, I feel like the ending was written to be cut and dry, but I just kind of took it as somewhat ambiguous, really. So it doesn't really work for me. And I don't really need an answer with this, unlike Say Cheese and Die Again. I'm okay with it being left a little bit ambiguous. I guess that makes it a little bit scary. Because a part of fear, a part of writing fear in novels, is not knowing. So, it's an okay ending. I'll give it that. So, rating this book. I'd have to give this one a 7 out of 10. And that's mainly because I had a few problems with it being a little too goofy for my taste. The lizard part... Yeah, there's a part where he turns into a giant seven-foot lizard, by the way. That part is a little goofy. Also, the circus family, uh, the chimpanzee pet. <laughs> oh, man. But I really do like the atmosphere this builds, the fear of going to sleep and changing. I, haven't f I feel like that hasn't been done in a movie before, has it? If so, I need to see it. And that's really all I have to say about it. Oh yeah, the name of the reality police. That's pretty goofy too. I mean, you could have thought of anything they could have been named. Still, reality police? <laughs> it's generic and lame, I'm sorry. So yeah, I, re I did enjoy this one. It's a good sci-fi book. Pick it up if you're interested. Anyway guys, that has been my review on Don't Go to Sleep. Make sure to stay tuned. And join us tomorrow for next episode, number 55, The Blob, Who Ate Everyone. Have a scary